Good morning, it's Weekender time. We're back again. In this episode, you, you could win a complete Battle Systems sci-fi terrain set. Um, we'll be talking about how you can win that in the show. Good morning, welcome to The Weekender. So, I'm joined by Sam and Justin, who you probably already know, and we've managed to grab Colin from Battle System. <laughs> we challenged him to come on the show last weekend, and um, he took up that challenge. Mm -hmm. I managed to find a last minute flight to get over to us, so we're, we're going to have to steam through these weekenders this weekend because we've got to get this man back to a flight. <laughs> Um, Colin, welcome to the Studio One. Nice to have you, Matt. It's great to be to here. here. Good to meet you, mate. <laughs> um, I've just got a very quick announcement before we go on. Um, I'm doing a little shout out uh, to the Battle Quest Gaming Day. Okay, okay. this is going to be happening uh, happening in Brighton Road in Horsham. Okay, and it's a tabletop gaming event, and they're going to have Mad Maverick Muse of Oddball Aeronauts is going to be attending on the day. And they're also going to be running a small tournament. So if you're in the London Horsham kind of area, why not um, have a look for that? You'll find it at uh, BattleQuest Day Gaming Day in Brighton Road, Bra Baptist Church, Brighton Road, Horsham. So there, shout out completed. Right. It's, it's another massive week in gaming. Of course. There's uh, one thing that everybody's talking about. And that is Space Hulk. Yeah. Space Hulk is back. It's Space back. Hulk is awesome. Hooray. And we have a world exclusive unboxing of Space Hulk. Sam, if you pass me that up. Here it is, ladies Wait and gentlemen. Wait a minute. Wait is, a minute. Yeah. This is a new box? Kind of. <laughs> it's oh, the dust. Okay. It's, it's not very new. It's, um, okay, okay, I'm cheating, I'm cheating. It, As you do. It is intact, though. If you All right. I love this box. That's, uh, oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so you hold that. Okay, Welcome guys, if Island. I don't remember what's said in this show, concussion. Ow. Actually, although it is kind of cheating, this isn't the new Space Hulk. This is the old Space Hulk. It's as near as Which mix. was the new Space Hulk, yep. but not the new... Old Space Hulk. Yeah, so we're still, it was third we're, ed. You but still have them on the sprue. I have it intact. It's entirely intact. Now I know. I can hear. Stop it. Stop. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Stop it. Do you hear what he's saying? You're one of them gets it. Bought Space Hulk and denied somebody else from getting Space Hulk um, who wanted to play it. Yeah. But I didn't buy it to hock it off on eBay. You, I, you bought it for history's sake. I bought it because I adore Space Hulk. Absolutely adore Space Hulk. And I adored this product. So I had two copies. Yep. So it's um um So you have a built copy and you have your, your pristine. We even gave it we even box. gave away at least one or two copies on Beast of War at the time as prizes. Uh, yes. and no, so, it, so. was it not the Battlefront phone we gave away? No, no, I gave away space hopes okay. as well. So it's intact. Yes, it's not the new one, but it basically is the new yeah. one. Yeah. So Games Workshop have um kind of out of the blue. But you know what? We say it's out of the blue. Mm. Who I knows wonder, how long I it's been in the planning? Long they've been in the planning for it. Certainly, it's not entirely knee jerk because they do have some additional components. For example, they have one more, I uh, believe, one more additional game uh, tile. Tile. So they have one more cardboard piece in it that has okay. a tile for a control room. Yep. And they have introduced some markers and things for boarding <laughs> torpedoes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like Does that. that mean we could be seeing some new scenarios to play through? There's four new scenarios. Oh, four new scenarios. Right. Excellent. I'd like um, to have a little gripe. But no. You're not griping about Space Hulk. Do you want me to, de <laughs> to, to decant you onto the, uh, onto the table here? No, yeah, because then you would destroy about. the lovely Battle Systems fantasy tree. Oh. <laughs> Let me finish. Yeah. Four new scenarios plus a White Dwarf exclusive scenario. Right. Or, it could be wrong, it could be three new scenarios <laughs> plus a White Dwarf exclusive scenario, but there is 
there is an exclusive one in uh, White Dwarf. Okay. okay, Justin, I can. You're you're dying. Right. What is your gripe? Why? Why are they re-releasing it and trying to add just a few tiny little new bits to it? Okay. Uh, you know, I already own a copy of this. I have it at home. I've played it. I love it. Am I having to go out and buy a brand new set of Space Hulk to get those extra missions? Yes. How about no? <laughs> well, how about yes? Well, how about no? How about yes? The thing I'm not about, playing this Okay, game. right. I, I don't gotta own say, Space Hulk. I want to buy it. And you and lots of other yeah. people didn't get uh, didn't get the chance to get space on. Mm. Colin, did you manage to get it last I've time? I've got it. Around? Yeah, I got it. You got yeah. it. Yeah. I feel so uh, left out. <laughs> yeah, but you and plenty others, you know, because it was a it was a yeah. limited run. It wasn't. You see, there's some confusion because at the time there was. You see, Games Workshop stay stuff, and then there's a pile of people on forums say things that Games Workshop is supposed to have said, but I don't really believe that Games Workshop ever said. So there was the, the one that it's limited edition and that Games Workshop destroyed the moulds. <laughs> yeah, like that was going to happen. Well, um, when you're doing hard plastic moulds. It's, um, I, I, have, I have some thoughts on this, okay? If you had asked me, <laughs> even if you'd asked me today, did I expect Games Workshop to bring back Space Hulk and it basically just be a reprint? I would have said, no, I don't expect that. I, knowing Games Workshop, there'll be something, there'll be something significantly, sig significantly new or changed about mm. it. Um, it'll be a different game. It'll be a new edition because we had first edition, mm -hmm. we had second edition, this third is edition, third edition. Yeah. in the, 2009. The one, the, yeah, the one that's coming out is still just, it's just, it's just this with a with a bit extra. In saying that. Um, Space Hulk, I think, completely re-energized 40k back in 2009. It was a mammoth product. Like, you mm -hmm. felt the weight of that. Yes, against my skull just there now. <laughs> Thank you for that, it, by the way. As, as products go... It, yeah, it, it, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Mm. However, that was 2009. This is now 2014. Mm-hmm. There, there have been better products than this released mm. since. I don't believe that, it w as much as, I, I, as I'm a big fan of Space Hulk and I love this box set, I don't believe that you, we could open that today and say that that's the best boxed board game in the market. Back, back in no. 2009, actually, this won, uh, I think it won an Origins Award and the Golden Geek Award for best sci-fi board game. So well, there's a, sure. there's a couple of issues with it, right? Yeah. One, the game Space Hulk itself now, a little outdated, mm. okay? Because even the third edition rules, as interesting as they are, board games have moved on a mm. fair bit since then. So I would have expected, if it had been me, the, a re-release of fourth edition Space Hulk to include things like maybe an AI deck in there for solo play, to certainly start to look at expanding it for other races, to, so mm -hmm. you could have you meet orcs down in a space hulk, mm -hmm. or you could meet maybe a dark Eldar raiding party or something like that. Yeah, in that'd space be cool. Hulk. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, I would have expected them to have clicked and said, "Right, we don't." I'm going to. I'm talking. I'm talking on behalf of Games Workshop here. I'm paraphrasing. Um, obviously, they could call me out on this and say it's utter nonsense. But generally, from what I can gather. Games Workshop don't like doing board games and specialist games anymore because they released that. If they supported that ongoing, everybody in the stores would become focused on that and they would stop buying armies. Hmm. Okay? That's why you haven't seen Blood Bowl and things like this because the danger is that if you create this huge hype in around all of their stores, mm -hmm. that everybody gets so involved in that they forget to actually buy the the bread and butter which is the armies yeah of, so of game suddenly Project. i'm buying boxes like this i'm not having to buy multiple boxes i have everything in one box yes now whether, now whether that's true or not um i don't know you know I, i'm not i'm not so so sure that that the the consumer actually works like that but i the 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 general feedback that i've always got from insiders in workshop was that that has been their concern mm -hmm. and that's why specialist games and stuff like that were seen as a distraction not just a distraction of the design teams 
but a distraction of uh, of the actual cost, the consumer uh, the base, player base. That, that they work with. They brought this out in 2009. It was a huge success. Uh, they gave it another go with Dreadfleet, which was a huge failure. Mm -hmm. They haven't done anything since. I just want to say, I still love Dreadfleet. I still like it. Yes, but Dreadfleet, yeah. Dreadfleet didn't push the buttons that this pushed. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and we've, we've covered that in other episodes. Now, there is a way to bring a game like this out and support it, and that is to look at ways of opening it up to other races and things like that, mm -hmm. so that anybody that goes into a Games Workshop or whatever and buys this as their first experience of 40K, mm -hmm. then there's, uh, in the back of the book, there's stats that they can go and buy a box of knobs or boys, they can go and mm -hmm. buy a box of Dark Eldar, you know, they could buy um, Imperial Astra Militarum yeah. so, or something like that. So suddenly, instead of this being something that's broken apart from the main range, this is something that becomes it the gateway it to be inclusive to the main range. It into to, the main range. To be fair, yeah. most of those rules exist for the first edition already. Well, there's a lot of fan-based rules out there. Yeah, Space Hulk, yes, before are. 2009, I was buying uh, Space Hulk second editions and things. You'll we see. have it here somewhere. It's probably up in here somewhere. Um, um, what, uh, what really excited me at the time was the huge wealth of Space Hulk fan-made rules. Mm -hmm. There was solo play created by fans. Mm. Uh, there was multiplayer created by fans. Mm -hmm. There were stats for uh, things like Dreadnoughts and there were stats for things like Orcs and other races. Yeah. You had the 3D Hulk created by fans. Well, when it comes to 3D terrain, uh, Space Hulk just bursts to life when you have 3D mm -hmm. terrain, which we're going to talk to this man about in I'll about two seconds, not. right? Um, but here's, here's my concern, right? Is... Um, we could be looking at this as Workshop maybe trying to shore up the, the sales for this quarter by mm -hmm. saying, we need something that we can do a small amount of work to that isn't going to chew up a lot of people's time, mm -hmm. that isn't going to chew up a huge amount of uh, investment, yeah. um, but will generate um, a lot of cash. But I don't want to just pin it on that. Because Space Hulk is more than just the money, okay? Mm -hmm. Space Hulk um, has, a, has an opportunity to potentially, at least the way it, it did in 2009, whether it does it now or not, mm. in 2009, it completely re-energized 40K. You know, it's, 40K was doing okay, mm. you know, but Space Hulk, like, Oh, yeah, well, I mean, really re-energized re re the whole thing. When these minis came out, these particular Space Marines, mm. you looked at them and went, oh my God, they're so detailed. There's so much iconography on these. And I know one or two people went, yeah, they're great, but I didn't want Blood Angels. Yeah, yeah, of course. But they were the best looking models exactly. uh, uh, of their time. And they still stand up well today. Oh yeah, they're still, they're still beautiful up. minis. And this is why, you know, it, it, it's, such a, it, it's such a strange one to talk about because, you know, maybe they re-released it because genuinely and uh, internally in workshop, they think that there's nothing wrong with it. The, because uh, the the box is that good. You know, if you don't have Space Hulk, go and get it this time around because you will love it. Mm -hmm. But uh, in my opinion, and bear in mind that it's the opinion from somebody that already owns a copy of it, mm -hmm. or multiple copies of the different <laughs> editions of it, mm -hmm. um, Space Hulk is a little bit tired now as a game. Okay, it's still a lot of fun, but there's more fun games out there. Mm -hmm. Space Hulk could have done with a uh, with a bit of a a revamp, a revamp. And I think it, it's it was. I don't know what Workshop have planned. Maybe they do have expansions planned after this one to try and keep the ball rolling. I think it would be fantastic if they did, because just releasing it in isolation, mm. I don't know what effect that's going to have. Releasing it. And then following it up with a bit of ongoing support throughout the year, mm. I think that could be an amazing yeah. thing. Well, would... You're hoping for story expansion boxes, so maybe inquisitorial uh, henchman team goes in to try and figure out what happened to Blood Angels. Yeah, well, come in to try and they've loot. moved that direction, and I applaud them for it. You know, with mm. the with the the kind of story boxes that they're releasing. Uh, Stormclaw, now. Stormclaw is a, is a prime example. You know what they're doing with Nagash mm. in in fantasy, which I know we haven't talked about. We're going to talk about. Uh, fantasy maybe in the next episode 
But what they they really are kicking up the narrative now mm -hmm. and uh, doing these these things. Who knows? Maybe they could they might do something similar with Space Hulk, where it is reboxes of components that already exist within the Games Workshop range. But unless you tell that next level of the story with an included book, because uh, Workshop are able to turn out writing and and fluff now like no one else in the business. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're going to see a series of storied expansions, mm -hmm. in which case this makes perfect sense. Get the base game out there, um, but it is a limited run. It is a wild stocks last again, which yeah. makes me think that maybe it's not going to be followed yeah. up. But then Stormclaw mm -hmm. was a wild stocks last. So, Well, I really hope they do come out with the expansions because um, having done that history of the Space Hole cut, <laughs> article recently i went back and looked at go and read it yeah i went back and looked at all these cool expansions that the first edition had mm -hmm. like deathwing and gene steel yeah. the gene stealers expansion especially which uh, brought in the gene stealer cult mm -hmm. one of my favorite parts of the 40k fluff mm -hmm. and let you have epic sci-fi battles and introduce the gray knights a lot of uh, warhammer 40k fluff stems from those uh, expansions and original yeah. ones mm -hmm. and you said about multi-level play yeah the first expansion i think um deathwing that that brought that into the first edition mm -hmm. so i really hope they bring in more stuff like that space hulk plays great over multiple yeah. levels yeah, yeah well, you, know, like, um... you do kind of have it in this box but you're setting up two separate maps Mm. So you have the little vent tile, so you'll go in that vent, come out that vent, and you're on a different board. So you do sort of have it. I have seen at a convention um, the, the, that we go to, uh, um, somebody always used to, anyway, turn up with oh, a multi-level yes. yes. Space Hulk board that had three levels or four levels of Space Hulk mm -hmm. all going on, and, and that was the Hulk. Now, in t talking about Space Hulk boards and Space Hulk terrains, mm -hmm. this man's just invented. <laughs> this is this has got to be a dream come true for you guys because your Kickstarter is now basically delivered. Mm -hmm. um, yep. The the sci-fi Kickstarter, you got it there pretty much bang on time to when you said you were, you yeah, were going to get there. Yeah, slightly late, but for Kickstarter, we mm. we were told we were early. So <laughs> we looked at it on the show last week. Um, it's sci-fi, it's multi-level out of the box. It's infinitely changeable. It's infin infinitely changeable. It's perfect for Space Hulk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay, Give it a Do you know something in Games Workshop that the rest of us didn't know? <laughs> if I did, I'm sure I wouldn't be allowed to sit here talking about Space Hulk, to be fair. I, I grew up on Space Hulk, and you know the, 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 the sci-fi train that we do came from my passion from that game right there or mm -hmm. uh, the first edition of it. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, uh, it was the logical step. I was building the sci-fi set that we're delivering now to backers, you know, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, it came from that box, the inspiration originally. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, the the sci-fi train set's going out to backers, but it's actually going to be available to order sometime kind of soon. What's the best way for people to keep in touch with you guys to find out when they can pull the trigger on that? And uh, Okay, and well, what we're doing at the moment, we're telling everybody that's on our Kickstarter, um, <clears throat> anybody that follows on, on Facebook and Twitter, that that's the place that you're going to need to be because we, we are getting email after email saying, I want your sci-fi, I want your sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And more people are, that are discovering our, um, our current Kickstarter they're loving what we're doing here, but they're also saying, but I'm a huge Space Hulk fan, I'm a huge whatever fan. Um, and so we're basically saying, well, look, if you come and, you know, come and see us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, um, then you'll get the ping. The moment we know the date that we're going to go live in, in October with a stock, and we can't do it yet because we're waiting for to know exactly what stock we're going to have left over. We're also waiting for just a few more backers in the USA to actually get the sets. Mm -hmm. So until we've got everything and we've dealt with any problems there might be, we'll basically say, right, here we go, guys. We're going to put whatever we got left on, on, on the website, which is a fair bit, but we've also got a huge amount of emails sitting waiting for people that are dying mm -hmm. to, grab, uh, to grab it. So sometime in October, um, we will tell you on Facebook and on Kickstarter and on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're clever, maybe YouTube as well. Do you know what I mean? And we'll just be like, great, guys, this is the date we're going to launch. A bit like a mini Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And then you've got whatever, how many, however many hours or days or, or weeks it lasts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. To, grab, to grab a copy. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, look, um, Space Hulk is back. I'm 
Delighted to see it back. Um, I'm holding judgment to see if they're going to do anything else with it. Okay. Mm. So my sense of what, whether it was worthwhile or not, we'll wait for at least another couple of months. We'll, we'll, we'll give it to Christmas to we see what happens. Mm. Right now, I'm a little bit underwhelmed, but then I already have a copy. So yeah, I don't really have very much entitlement to be whether overwhelmed or underwhelmed anyway. Mm -hmm. However, um, let's see what happens. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll be ongoing support for it. If you love Space Hulk, we're getting to bring out and dust off all the old crap we did back in 2009. Yeah. You will love the Deep Space Assault console. <laughs> the Deep Space, uh, Deep Space Assault console is available to backstagers. It's a Space Hulk inspired soundboard. Mm -hmm. So if you enjoy playing Space Hulk, this is, this is the perfect accompanying thing for you you log in you can go into it on backstage mm -hmm. and we have we have uh we have the monster screen <clears throat> we have we all have, the noises we have the the chain blades roar we have assault guns running mm -hmm. big mini guns so if you want to bring your games of space hulk to life from an audio perspective come on over to backstage click the deep space assault console and go in there and give it a go you will you'll have a blast with it an absolute mm -hmm. blast right um before we move on to our main topic of the show, because it's totally <laughs> distracting me now, I'm looking at it going, oh, I want to talk about it. We have some things to do, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we have some bookkeeping. First things first, we busted 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. We did indeed. Hooray! And that can mean only one thing. Invasion. Well, it can mean only one thing, that somebody has just won themselves a Reaver Titan. Now, we're recording this a little bit before the weekend, mm -hmm. so I'm going to use, by the magic of Beast of War time travel, I'm going to talk to Future Warren here and say, Hello, Future Warren. Tell us who won. Hello, Warren. I hope you've been enjoying your weekender. In fact, I know you did because I was there when you filmed it. But we have now picked the winner, and the winner of this magnificent titan is YouTuber... Simon Coulson. Congratulations, buddy. We will be firing you a PM um, to get you your Titan. Warren, back over to you. Okay, thank you for that future, Warren. Uh, congratulations to our winner. Whoever you well may be. Done. Whoever you may be, well done. Okay, um, I also have the competition for Carnivale that I can yes. announce. Yes, did I win? Um, did I win? I don't need future Warren for this one. Um, we're we're going to have a bit of a giggle here. There's uh, so last weekend, the the prize was um, that you. What did you have to do, Sam? You had to basically yeah. in one line sum up a Carnivale character. Yes. Uh, the guys from Vesper on Games went in and read them all, and there were hundreds of them. <laughs> yeah, we all had to go as well. <laughs> yep. So um, the guys from Carnivale went in and read them all, and then they picked their favourite. And the favourite is going to get to work with them after after the Kickstarter, as long as it's all successful and they make it, mm -hmm. um, the, to work with them to create their very own their character. Their very own character. Maybe the one you've described, it may be slightly different by the time you finish working with those guys. They'll have a miniature. Mm -hmm. They'll be in the rule book. In the backstory. They'll have the fluff in the backstory. You will be immortalized because no doubt you're going to get a credit. Now, they went in and they picked, and the winner was Robert Chrisholm, who posted Manipulator Hargrove. How he, she, moves the marionette. It's almost lifelike. Wait, where did the marionette go? Insert sound of someone being murdered by puppet. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. Congratulations. Uh, you are the, the grand prize winner. Now, we didn't announce that there was going to be runner-up prizes, no. but the guys from Vesperon Games were so impressed mm -hmm. that they, uh, they then went on to pick uh, some more winners who are going to receive the... Uh, again, it provided all... It all pans out this Kickstarter for them, mm -hmm. you're going to receive the exclusive Kickstarter model for free. However, if you participate in the Kickstarter, you're going to get that for free anyway. 
and they're going to and basically they uh, and I quote, "We will compensate you somehow else." Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh -huh. so um, the let me run through. So John Hay, you are a winner with Piper of Hamlin type character who can control swarms of rats to bring down their enemies. They could also play different tunes to influence friendly and enemy characters in different ways. That sounds like fun. That mm. sounds like an awesome, awesome character. Uh, John Hay, nice one. We like that. Next up, next winner, Big Bad Baz. Colonel B, an unhinged ex-sixth US cavalry inventor, still believing he's fighting in the Indian Wars, he always wears his old cavalry uniform with two clockwork Colt 45s. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Love Very it. Theme time. Very cool. Next up, Mad Game. Massimo Saria, poor mask maker in Venice, who was always looked down upon by the nobility. <laughs> now, however, after the rent in the sky, he infuses his masks with magic to now control the nobility that treated him so badly. That is oh my. Isn't that, that's giving me shivers oh. up the back of my spine. I, I, I can just imagine a beautiful backstory coming out of that one. I can imagine yeah. a beautiful range of miniatures coming oh, yeah. out of that I'm one. I'm thinking miniatures, you know? yeah. So it's, um, and then finally, we have Lunchbox. A Greek mercenary bare-knuckle boxer, Philo, and his best friend Clyde the Orangutan. <laughs> And I think we've got a picture of that. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have to blur that? No, no, that's an orangutan doing that. So okay, so because yeah. it's a monkey, it's cute. It's, it's not, not a monkey. Not a monkey. It's not a monkey. It's an ape. Yeah. Any not getting into this argument. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we are massive yeah. fans of the, Carnivale. The Kickstarter's kicking off, I believe, this weekend. Uh, so it's this one thirteenth, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one thing. Justin put down a very good one of a oh, Japanese crap. guy who goes up, touches people, and removes a proton of their soul. I misspelled. <laughs> I misspelled. Well, this was uh, the, Jap off. the Japanese ionizer, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> no, my idea he was ionized to my have soul. an agent of the Japanese Empire being sent out into the world to actually figure out what the hell's going on. And could strip protons from their soul. <laughs> <laughs> a portion of their soul. I misspelled. Basically, imagine a Japanese guy in broken down samurai armor, big ass tetsubo over the shoulder, yeah. stealing people's soul to week in, the, in melee, and then uh, just cracking them around the head like you did with that box of space. I'm hunks. sorry, but I didn't pick up a word because all I could think of is a small Japanese guy who's the equivalent of a large hydron collider. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Come on, I always put my foot in my gob. Well, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> Where do you go after that? Sucking a, po a proton, right. Anyway, hey. Carnivale, Carnivale is, is going back to Kickstarter this weekend. Um, we will be watching this one like a hawk. We love, we love, love the game. Mm -hmm. um, it is, however, a game that makes fantastic use of terrain, mm -hmm. okay? And we think we might have some beautiful terrain right here that would be perfect for a game of Carnivale, never mind a game of Dungeons and Dragons or whatever else you're going to play. This is, of course, the fantasy terrain from Battle Systems that's on Kickstarter right at this very moment. Colin, once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Um, we we used the sci-fi terrain last week, mm -hmm. and we had a we had a lot of fun putting that together. Yeah, started off slowly, but then was picking up speed as we started to get used to the the combinations. You know, it it looks complex, but there's once you get a few combos in your head of uh, how it all goes together. Once you get together, the rhythm of it, yeah, you do. Yeah, it starts to go together really nicely. Yeah. Well, I mean, like Colin was talking to me earlier, going. Oh, right. Yeah, well, when I sent you guys the box, I expected you just to, you know, take it out, show the sheet, punch a couple of bits out. I saw the video and went, holy crap, they built it. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it, 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 we couldn't help ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, uh, it, 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 was, it was just a terrain construction kit from heaven, you know. Um, and as big a fan as I am of the sci-fi, I have a huge, huge heart for fantasy. And whenever, and whenever I saw this on the Kickstarter, 
I just was blown away by the attention to detail that's in this mm -hmm. set. And now that I get to see it, because uh, you know, I was always wondering, you know, it's one thing seeing the, the pictures on, on Kickstarter, mm -hmm. uh, and I thought, I wonder what it looks like up close. And I've got to say, guys, it is absolutely beautiful. It, it's so... It's so expressive. It just, it just, every, little details everywhere that just pop out of the textures. These ones I particularly love have little books littered around <laughs> yeah. the place. Mm. So, Colin, tell us, tell us all about it. Tell us about the uh, first. Tell us a bit about Battle Systems. Now, you guys um, rocked on the scene what, what about three years ago, two years ago now. Thanks to you guys, yeah. And it's, um, <laughs> Yeah, because I remember we, we we spotted you guys and we I think we did a big uh, big thing on Turn Eight at the time when yes. we were giving away yes. um, some battle systems train. It was all downloadable stuff. But, yeah, that's how we started. But I think your heart was always in trying to create something that. It was a stepping stone for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So um, you then went on to create the to take the sci-fi terrain to Kickstarter. Yep. Had an amazing Kickstarter. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Um, like for a first time Kickstarter, it was draw draw droppingly good. Yep. It's um, but now you're you're taking fantasy, and it's like, where's the inspiration and stuff coming from from all for all of this? Well, as far as terrain's concerned, I mean, I didn't start gaming. I'm forty now. I didn't start gaming till maybe thirteen. Someone gave me the old um, Rogue Trader Games Workshop book. Um, back Got when there the belt back then, <laughs> but you know, back when there was just a few stores knocking about, and um, uh, even when even before that, I was you know people get the big action men and all that sort of stuff, mm. and big Star Wars fan had the figures, had the miniatures, but I was always like the the, the smaller the miniature for me, the, the smaller the figure you could play with, the better because mm. I could make a bigger world in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. So. Um, <clears throat> once I saw this rogue trader, I was like, oh my God, this is my dream. Look, and there's all these terrain they've made on the tabletop. Yeah, suddenly so, I, I discovered God skill. Oh, mm -hmm. it's just, I, I was just blown away by it. So I got the miniatures, started painting them and um, very quickly discovered that the terrain you had to make yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I started with books under sheets like everybody else for hills. And, mm -hmm. um, and then Space Hulk came out and uh, I was like, oh, wow, we get to go inside. And of course, the tiles were great, but I wanted to. I wanted the inside, so I literally started building the inside of um, spaceships. Um, and uh, back then, it was I had to draw everything. There was no printers in your home, or mm -hmm. I, we, certainly no computers. There was no internet. You know, mm -hmm. it was it was just thought. You know what what I got from the local hobby shop, and um, and of course over time, it's grown and grown and grown. And then we, we eventually I uh, created the sci-fi, and of course once you've done a sci-fi set you've got to go into fantasy, yeah. you know, um, and um, yeah, we just, it, it was just the next logical step is to have this like deep dungeon, but you can also have sort of multi-level aspects to it. Um, you can even use the two sets together, you know, by sort of like mixing your genres and, you know, portal yeah, gates, well, that type I mean, of like, thing. I'm looking on the table here and I'm seeing some modern warfare guys stepping out of a big <laughs> stone ring. In a big portal. How yes. awesome is that? Yes. <laughs> the dimension gate. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, for 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 games like um, Alien versus Predator, a lot of the time, you know, those those kind of miniatures games, yeah. you've mm -hmm. got this kind of temple environment. And yeah. the way we've done this is, it can be a deep dark dungeon dungeon. For your, you know, for Hero Quest and all those kind yeah, of great mm -hmm. fantasy games. Again, going back to my childhood, um, uh, through all the modern games, but at the same time, you can you can put a sci-fi twist on it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, yeah, absolutely love loving everything about the fantasy set at the moment. Yeah. Now, um, one of the things that strikes me about the fantasy set is I can't get over the sheer number of different components and stuff that's in it. Wow. Could you give me a bit of a, can you give us a rundown of all the different stuff that you've managed wow. to unlock so far in the Kickstarter? Oh, crikey, yeah. Um, I mean, the, one thing we do on the Kickstarter, we've always done, we did it with the sci-fi set, we've done it with this, is, is we, you know, we give big right from the off, offset. Mm -hmm. So that if we only just got funded, um, <clears throat> then you would get a full-on product. And, and what you see here is, um, and I've, there's still loads left over in the box, you'll get even, you know, without any stretch goals, which we've already hit loads, mm -hmm. you, would, you would get everything in there and more. I mean, I've only actually prototyped up probably 50% of the actual uh, furniture items that you well, put in there. And mm -hmm. you can see it's quite good. It's got a lot of clutter in the rooms and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. You'll get a lot more than that. But since then, 
We've given away um, loads of extra of the actual core components, so you'll get more tombs, chests, barrels, so you can really start to kind of clutter a room up, have a load of barrels stacked mm -hmm. in the corner. Yeah, and, and it's it gives all, you, all those little details that make it. It is, and for me, it's the cover. You know, being able to interact with cover, it adds a massive kind of dynamic to, uh, dynamic to the gameplay, so to be able to sort of dodge behind or, you know, use a spell to send a, um, you know, a barrel flying at someone's head, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but... but yeah. So, so, so we've got that as a core set, um, and like I say, that's there's still uh, a fair bit left over. Um, but since then, we've unlocked a lot more of the core items. We've got things like um, gargles on plinths now. Um, mm -hmm. We've got torture rack is on its way. Uh, we've got uh, we, we, it's not here. We've got an entire sewer system, which is um, went down a storm um, where you can actually just put these um, sewer tiles down. They're reversible, so there's lava on the back as well if you want oh, that yeah. kind of texture. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And the way we've done them is kind of 3D, so that when you place it down on your game mat, um, it, they're, they're built up so that when you look down, it looks like the water's countersunk, so, yeah. so it doesn't just look like a flat tile. Mm -hmm. um, so we've done that. We've done the great doors where we've got these huge double-level doors, something you could expect like a big dragon to burst through, yeah. um, mm -hmm. huge sort of staircases, uh, tapestries. They've all, all been unlocked. We've got the dimension gate that you see there. That was unlocked pretty early on. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got I've some seen stuff kind of to like mines. Uh, or like, uh, the mine, yeah, yeah one of the first got, uh, ones we did. A little bit set up on there. A little yeah. bit of track there, yeah. but uh, yeah, we've got, we've got mine, cart. mine carts with mm -hmm. tracks. That was interesting actually, because what we did, we did a mine. The idea with the mine cart was in the tracks was to create a setting. And we, we made the setting and it was like a, a, a theme for that room. Mm -hmm. And we set it out and everyone was like, yeah, this is great, but there's only two bits of track in it. And I'm like, well, yeah, because you make the entrance, the track comes out, the cart's there. Yeah. That gives you a theme. It's, it drives the narrative of the game. It's like, yeah, yeah, but I want mine carts. I want them running through doors. I want them all over the place. <laughs> I was like, oh, it doesn't fit on the tool. So everyone's like, make a complete tool of mine tracks. And they're so intricate. If we made mm -hmm. a tool of mine tracks, the, it, the, the die cut wouldn't stamp through it. You know? yeah. So, but what we did do, we, um, you know, uh, after after a little while, we um, as we do on our Kickstarters, is um, we we just altered the tool, moved it around a bit, and we managed to fit on more track. Mm -hmm. So, the, but the mines is very very popular. You also redesigned the, the tracks to make it more more modular and more to fit more properly, compatible with mm -hmm. the with yeah. The... When we first put the tracks down, it was um, an aesthetic to look at. So it, mm -hmm. you walked in the room and it looks great because that's what it's about. It's looking great. Mm -hmm. But we always make it so you know the miniatures can stand on the steps. You want to be able to use it in you know in gameplay. So once we realise more tracks, we we size them differently. So now they kind of line up with the floor tiles because yeah. everything's got a grid system on it anyway. If you want to use that, you can yeah. stick to a grid, which makes it um, you know easy to game with. So yeah, we've we've resized those as well. All right. Now every report we have heard from backers of your Kickstarter that you guys run quite a special Kickstarter kind of environment because we hear that um, that it becomes very much a, a Kickstarter community effort, that you're designing stuff as the Kickstarter goes yeah. in direct response and, and directly in, in kind of in league with the, the backers and the, the supporters yeah. of the project. Yeah, I mean, it'd be, it's tough. It's really, really tough because um, it's kind of a 50-50 effort. We start with the core product and we have some stuff already ready, kind of, you know, lined up to go. Um, but what we then do is just get in the comments, um, both Wayne and myself, we jump in the comments and we just, we just talk to the guys um, about all sorts. Um, I think we had an entire day of poetry uh, yesterday. People <laughs> only, <laughs> only was allowed to comment in poetry, which, you know, I didn't make many comments that day. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and what happens is, is that we get people saying, oh, this is great, but I'd love to see this, I'd love to see that. Uh, and as, as that kind of momentum, some, some things like the sewers, which mm -hmm. was a huge add-on that we've unlocked now, mm -hmm. um, I had nothing. I had no plans to do any sewers, but it just got, it got more and more gathered, more and more momentum. And in the end, I was just like, I'm going to have to make sewers. Mm -hmm. So while the Kickstarter is running, I then have to make it, design it, draw it, build it, prototype it, and stick it and take some photographs. And that's what mm -hmm. we're doing. So that's what I'm in the that's process. That's a lot of work, isn't it? So. It would be easier if I just did what I wanted to do all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it means uh, your community is getting exactly what they want all the time. Yeah. It is, a, it is very much a fine tuning of the product, the, the, it this is. whole process. Yeah. The, the, the backers, the backers on the Kickstarter uh, have direct input into what basically happens. Mm. Um, I mean, the dimension gate was, was something, although we didn't do it while the Kickstarter was running, it, on our Facebook, it was the community kind of said, oh, wouldn't it be great if you could do some sort of 
you know, portal or some mm. sort of, you know, dimension gate or something like that. Um, oh, and that would really interact with your your sci-fi set as well because we mm. back that and you could have this, all this genre, different mixing of the genres, you know. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I made that prior. Uh, and even on the even on the sci-fi, I did that. Uh, um, some of the components that came on the sci-fi when it launched were from ideas from the, the guys on our community. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm told that, that that level of communication then kind of continues on even after the Kickstarter finishes. There's still yes. a lot of back and forth there. Absolutely, yeah. We, we literally hold back nothing, um, which is, you know, um, it, it's, it's really hard work when you're trying to actually get something manufactured, but we'll do like, um, there's normally an update every couple of weeks at first, because mm -hmm. we're just generally collapsed on the floor, or I am at least. <laughs> um, um, but the, after that we start, every, everything, every time we get, um, uh, like what we get white copies when, when they stamp them and they send them back there's no images on it we get these white copies so it's this in in in, in complete white and mm -hmm. it's the first machined manufactured stamped copy so we take photographs of that and we show what's working and what's not working and we you know take pictures of our process and how that affects the manufacturer and then we we say look this is the mistakes we found so we send that back and mm -hmm. you know and if we're going to be ahead of time or behind time we let you know so we gained a couple of weeks early on we was like hey look at this ahead of schedule then we lost a couple of weeks and then we gained a, and so we just give constant updates um i mean the one of the things that we also did at the right at the end was when the ship left um from the manufacturers in china um, we basically gave out all the shipping details to the backers and the backers could actually so track, track the ship, the ship. <laughs> and that just went mental. There was updates from the backers. Um, I'll be honest, I never went on there. I didn't need to because we had some dedicated backers on there that were doing updates for us in the, mm. in the comments, telling us where it is, how long it stopped, protect, any delays and all the rest of it. And they tracked it to the point where they were... And when it docks, there was photographs going up of it. <laughs> it was just absolutely amazing. Um, and that really passed that 28 days of delivery. It was really, really good fun. So, yeah, um, yeah um, you, you, a big chunk of this is, is kind of molded by the, the backers themselves, which, mm. is, which is great. Hard work for us while the Kickstarter is running. Yeah. But once that's done, it's only 30 days, isn't it? You know, so mm. once that's done, we can collapse for a week and then, and then get on and, and get uh, back to it. Yeah, yeah, and then start making it. Yeah. Um, you're probably not going to answer this, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to probe anyway. Where's my probe? Uh, <laughs> there, 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 there. Get the grenade. The grenade. So um, I'm I'm bracing myself. I've, oh, been, oh. I've been watching the the Kickstarter, <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, there's a lot of talk about people would really, really, you know, like to see castle walls. <laughs> you know, we're looking at this. Yeah, it's a dungeon. It's a beautiful dungeon. Yeah. It's also really good for sewers. Make yep. fantastic mines, mm -hmm. wouldn't half make a superb castle. So I'm seeing a lot of chit chatter on there about people wanting castle walls. I am now one of them. Okay. <laughs> what do you reckon? It, could we could we twist your arm? Maybe you might have a look at that. In in classic comments, uh, I would say no castles. But yes, uh, there there are certainly some stuff happening behind the scenes. All I'll say is that um, I have my graphics tablet and um, I am laying down ideas and I am testing the tooling um, and something might come from that. Oh, oh, oh F5, F5, F5. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I've got to say, Colin, the, the set is absolutely beautiful. Mm. Um, uh, I'm just astounded by how, how just how lovely it is, and mm -hmm. I know it, it's it, you could just there's so much detail in it, and it, you know because it's spread over so many different levels. Mm -hmm. I just think any role player or fantasy gamer, you know, people that play Malifaux, yep. you know, it's they're going to absolutely love this. Mm -hmm. Guys, if you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, head on over and check it out. Be sure to follow the guys on Twitter and Facebook um, to get all those updates and when the sci-fi sets are coming out and be first, uh, you know, and to find out you know updates and stuff on the on the fantasy set. Colin, look, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. What a beautiful, beautiful product. Thank you very much for bringing it and showing it to us. Cheers, guys. <laughs> okay, I've got a few uh, little updates. Um, Remember that tomorrow morning we have the Weekender XLBS. That's the extra long backstage version for all of the, the supporters of Beasts of War and our backstagers 
who get access to a ton of extra content and amazing things like the Deep Space Assault console. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention uh, free downloads and stuff whenever they come along. Ton we get, uh, there's almost a free download, a uh, digital download of uh, building and terrain stuff every, nearly every week. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, free sample chapters of books. Mm -hmm. We have a ton of additional content. Um, yeah, it's the place to be. Um, before uh, update, and I think uh, I've just heard the sound of a logger kicking in there with a chainsaw, we are giving away one of the sci-fi packs, okay? Now, to be in with a chance of winning this, all you have to do is comment below on this video, either here on Beasts of War, or on YouTube, or on Facebook, and be sure to do that. And why not, while you're at it, why not post some ideas of other environments and things that you'd like to see these guys tackle because my mind is blazing with ideas mm. of things that I would love to see. Um, other things that are happening at this moment, we are working through uh, on the table. It's on the table is gradually returning now, but it, it's slightly different. It's returning as um, a, basically our digital magazine, okay? This is our easing. And it's a, the show and the weekly email, okay? So it's a basically a beautifully designed weekly e-zine that arrives free of charge to your inbox. All Beasts of War subscribers and friends are getting it. Um, and every fourth issue, maybe fifth issue, there's an accompanying show on the table, mm -hmm. which is there to support that e-zine and to elaborate on the stuff that's in the easing. Um, our thoughts on this were, we, you know, we wanted to bring on the table back now for a while. We're going to be gradually doing that. Over the next weeks, months, years, we want to try and see what it's going to take to make this easing the best resource, and the best easing of its kind in the world. I'm going head to head with even the concept of magazines here, because I, I, we're looking at trying to make something that enlightens your weekends when it arrives, that you're just, itching at your tablet every weekend, waiting for on the table easing to arrive. So that one hit stop where you can pop in and say, right, what's the latest and greatest from the world of Wargaming? Yes, and we're expanding on it week by week. We're gonna be adding new kind of features and functionality. There'll be exclusive content will gradually make its way that will only be available in the easing. There'll be competitions. There'll be Justin's top pick. What? Wait, 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 what? <laughs> yes. Um, I, I disavow any knowledge of this right now. Okay, it's him. Okay, well, the, the, what's even better, there'll be Justin's top pick as selected by me. <laughs> Expect to see horror, lots and lots of horror. <laughs> so uh, the whole concept is that On the Table is, is returning, but it's not just a show. It is now um, a digital kind of magazine format mm. that over the course of the next year, we intend to improve and perfect. So you get a bundle of joy landing mm. into your inbox uh, every weekend. Um, one final announcement. Yes, one final announcement. Um, my apologies, this is completely my slash our fault, uh, but we're going to extend the, the Mantic Battle Zones Terrain Challenge. Mm. The reason for this is being that because we over the summer we had to completely re-secure and re-waterproof storage spaces and we had so much going on, we even ourselves didn't get enough time to build the terrain and stuff that we wanted to do for the challenge. And we've had a number of emails from people coming in saying they haven't got their stuff yet, can we hold off until they get their stuff? So what we're going to do is we're going to extend it right through the new year, okay? Um, so it's now got a dedicated post on Beasts of War. We'll be coming back to it almost weekly. It's going to appear in the e-zine as well. So you'll be able to find it in the e-zine under Community Challenges to go in there and get involved in the Mantic Battle Zones Challenge. To recap what it is, build any piece of terrain from the Mantic ba uh, using the Mantic Battle Zones uh, plastic kit. And we will be picking a winner the winner, if you've only used a small amount of terrain, you will get a big box of Mantic terrain. Yeah, so it's, it's up to that main box. Yep. If, however, you've used a lot of terrain, so more, that that, big box. more that's in the box, we're going to ship you everything that you used right back to you. 
How cool is that? We've had this discussion before because if someone has used more than what's in that giant ass box, they're going to get this in the post and go, right. I have to do it all again. <laughs> yeah, it's just that moment of, right, round two. I tell you what, we know that that is, uh, that is a very difficult proposition that if you've used a huge amount of terrain, that you're going to have to do it all again. So we're going to sweeten the deal in that box that we're going to ship you. We're going to put Justin in it as well, who will come and live I am you. not going to be a build monkey. I already have to do this for your flat pack furniture because you're crap at it. Oh, are you sure? I thought you were going to do this for them. No, no, this is not in my contract. Oh, Wait, do I even have a Sorry contract? Sorry about that, guys. We were going we to try and ship Justin to you as well, let you have him for a week, do as you need. Um, but hey. I mean, clipping wise, uh, clipping, uh, clipping. But it looks, like, it looks like it's not going to happen. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching The Weekender. We hope you've had a great week of gaming. I more hope that you have a great week of upcoming gaming. In XLBS this week, we're going to be talking about... Um, I'm going to further the discussion on inclusion in the hobby just a little bit because um, the, we've had tons and tons of comments. We're um, a really, really interesting dialogue in Backstage about uh, how we widen the inclusion in the hobby. Mm -hmm. um, we're not, I'm not ready just to go too deep into that again yet because I want a bit more time to mull that over. But we're going to be talking about Legends of the Old West. We're going to be talking about D&D 5th Edition. We're going to be talking about Scooby-Doo. <laughs> a little bit of bolt action as well, guys. And um, bolt action, of course. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of other topics in there. So if any of that stuff grabs you, make sure and come on over to beastsofwar.com tomorrow morning and uh, catch us on the Weekender XLBS. So once again, thanks to Sam and Justin. Thank you again, Colin, for being our guest. Thank you for having me. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing week of gaming.